Well, church family, welcome to this online worship service. We're so glad that we can stay connected. We certainly wish that we were worshiping together in person, but we appreciate everyone's patience and understanding. For those who have remained at home for this entire season, I want to say again that we love you and miss you. We know that we have several people who have health concerns that continue to prevent you from attending in-person worship. So please know that you're in our thoughts and in our prayers. I am so grateful for the opportunity to serve on the staff at FUMC. This church family is a blessing. This is a trying time and so many members of the FUMC family have texted and called to encourage different members of the staff. I am thankful for the members of the leadership team for their wisdom to navigate the complexities of this unprecedented season. And I appreciate Pastor Jay's leadership throughout this entire process. He has been very diligent in considering all the critical information to keep us moving forward. We do wanna take a moment today to update you. Several members of the staff had a potential exposure to the COVID-19 virus. Three individuals that attended our last in-person worship on June 28th have tested positive for COVID-19. All three of them thankfully are doing very well and have only mild symptoms. Several members of the staff, including Pastor Jay and myself, were quarantined for a period and then tested. Pastor Jay and I both received our results and we were negative. And so far, all the results that have come back on all the staff members who have been tested have also come back negative. The leadership team has considered the spike in positive cases in Brownwood recently and the cases that we had in worship. And because of all of these factors, the leadership team has decided the following. We will continue with online worship throughout the month of July. Our target date for resuming in-person worship is Sunday, August the 2nd. We hope to open the nursery on Sunday, August the 19th, and then resume Sunday school September the 2nd. These all depend on the cases that continue to happen, and we will continue to monitor all of the factors that affect this target date. We thank everyone at FEMC for their patience and support as we continue to work to keep everyone safe. I believe God is at work in this situation and that we must be diligent in seeking His voice perhaps more than ever before. Our mission has not changed, but our way of accomplishing our mission may require us to know, love, and serve in more creative ways. There is growth to be had in this season for each of us. We now know more clearly than ever before that the church is not a building, but a people. And several of my friends have inspired me during this time as they've demonstrated amazing resilience. These are the kinds of things that we can learn through this season. So I say to you today, be encouraged, church. Let's be listening for what God is saying as we persevere together. What we learn now may well be crucial in the days ahead. And now let me say a word of prayer for our church, and then we'll have a word from Pastor Jay. Father, we thank you that you're present with us in this season. We thank you that you're always speaking. Give us ears to hear, God, and let us be encouraged as your people. And find your voice to be the thing that guides us in the days ahead. We thank you for everything that you're doing, and we, we thank you so much, God, for your blessings on our church and for keeping people safe in this time. We pray this now in Jesus' name, amen. And now stay tuned for a word from Pastor Jay. Good morning, church. And thank you, Joey, for sharing that information. It's certainly not information either of us wanted to be sharing at this time, but. It's definitely information that we needed to get out to the community uh, so that people know what to expect as we move forward. Uh, I look forward to gathering back together the first Sunday in August. Uh, my hope is that that is what we can do and we'll uh, uh, wait to see what else is happening then midway through as uh, we hope to be able to open the nurseries and then begin uh, resuming our Sunday school the first Sunday in September. Uh, today, uh, we have a special opportunity uh, to hear from Rachel Myers. Uh, she's been serving as our Associate Youth Minister and she performed a crucial uh, ministry for us and a crucial task in the transition uh, between Schaefer's uh, leaving and moving on into the mission field and Alex taking over. I'm so thankful for the work that she has done and as you may know, uh, Rachel has taken a full-time position at Howard Payne. We are so proud of her and I know that she's going to do an amazing job as she uh, works in the events planning and admissions and welcoming department there at Howard Payne. I'm so proud of her. As we prepare to uh, hear from her, I wanted to share these encouraging words with you from 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5. 
Uh, this is one of the earliest books that Paul wrote in the New Testament. Uh, and he said, uh, See that no one pays back evil for evil, but always try to do good to each other and to all people. It's uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.15. Uh, these words from Paul echo uh, in the early days of the Methodist movement, where John Wesley told us to do all the good we can, to do no harm, and to do the things that help us stay in love with God, the three simple rules that I spoke about recently in one of my sermons. In this time period, in this season, I think those are encouraging words, and vital words for us as the body of Christ. That we do no harm. Think about the words we speak and the actions we take. Do they harm others? Do all the good we can. Do the things that we say, do the things that we do, do our actions in life, do good for others. And then do those things that help us stay in love with God. Uh, participate in the means of grace, worship as we can, study our Bibles, spend, spend time in prayer. Uh, this is certainly a time where prayer is needed. I just want to thank you, church, for being who you are. Uh, today, we've got another curbside kindness happening where we are collecting uh, games and tool and uh, uh, card games, board games, uh, new packaged uh, games for uh, the state school. Those youth there at, uh, at the Jackson unit are lonely. They're bored. Uh, they can't have visitors. And uh, Carl and Miranda Bonifer have, have put this opportunity together for us so we can gather these games. I hope you'll participate in that. If you are unable to get here uh, to the church today to drop off during the curbside kindness, uh, please let me know and we will make arrangements that we can pick those up as well. I pray that you will continue praying for our church, uh, praying for our community, praying for our state and our nation as we continue working through this and knowing that God is with us. We are not alone. Now, a word from Rachel. Hey church, I miss you guys so much. Um, I was just talking with Pastor Joey about how we're just ready for this to be over. Um, however, this is where we're at and Honestly, I'm really thankful that Pastor Jay and Joey both asked me to preach this Sunday just because um, the Lord's been showing me a lot through this time. And I'm excited to be able to share that on a larger platform than what I would usually get. Um, and so, yeah, let's dive in. I'm going to be talking about a book of the Bible some of y'all might not have heard of. Um, I'd be very surprised if I had more than five people from the church tell me that they've studied this book of the Bible. Um, it's pretty rare. It's a minor prophet named Habakkuk. It's a fun name. Um, we can all admit that. I want to challenge all of the families to learn how to say it. Um, it does kind of sound like a sneeze. I'll admit it. Um, but he is an awesome prophet, um, and he's very unique. So he, here's what his name looks like, just for those of y'all trying to find it in your Bibles. He's about, well, okay, here's the Old Testament, and then this is, we have about two more books in the Old Testament, and then the New Testament starts. So he's in the back half of your Bible. Um... And he is very unique. Um, most of the prophets in the Bible are telling Israel to get their act together. Or they're giving a message from the Lord to the Israelites. Where the Lord is usually telling them to get their act together. <laughs> um, however, the book of Habakkuk switches things up. And it's mostly full of the prophets' laments to God about how the world around him seems to be falling apart. <laughs> a lot of y'all are probably thinking, ah yes, that's why she's been reminded of this book. <laughs> but there are a lot of things in this book that 
I have learned from, that I hope y'all can learn from. Um, and I know that there's so much more for me to learn from this book. Um, the Lord really speaks in mighty ways, and I'm excited to hopefully show some people um, a new part of the Bible. So, diving in, um, verse 2 is the very first thing that Habakkuk says. Verse 1 is says the prophecy that Habakkuk the prophet received, um, just kind of telling us. But verse 2, Habakkuk cries out to the Lord and says, how long, O oh Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? We're off to a great start. <laughs> um, I think one of the reasons I love this book is because it's so raw and so real. Habakkuk isn't trying to sugarcoat anything um, for the Lord because he knows that the Lord can handle it. I myself and I think a lot of other Christians really struggle um, with trying to ignore the bad and just immediately being like, all right, but we have Jesus. And like, yeah, but Jesus saved us, so we're good to go. Um, and that is true. Don't get me wrong. Um, we do have Jesus Christ as our hope. Um, however, sometimes we are called um, to just sit and cry out to the Lord and tell the Lord how we're feeling. And Habakkuk does that, again, just because I think Habakkuk knows that the Lord can handle it. I respect Habakkuk's honesty, honestly. <laughs> um, we know this section of the Bible isn't um, something that a lot of people would want on their coffee mugs or hanging up as artwork in their home. Um, but I hope that we as a congregation can come to respect Habakkuk and again learn a lot from it. I was drawn to this passage when um, my roommates and I had to enter back into quarantine. So we had quarantined for a little bit and um, we were actually done and then two days later we were told that we have to quarantine again and <laughs> so I caught myself um, saying to God Lord how long is this going to last and I realized that's exactly what Habakkuk says how long oh Lord <laughs> is the first three words that he says <laughs> But very quickly, the Lord reminded me of his response to the prophet. In verse 5, God says, Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. Hey, Habakkuk, I know that you just said that there is violence, iniquity, injustice, wrongdoing, conflict abounds in your world. The law is paralyzed. Justice never prevails. However... Look at the nations and watch. Be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you wouldn't believe, even if I had told you. Dang. <laughs> and then the Lord goes on to tell Habakkuk what he's going to do. And sure enough, Habakkuk doesn't understand it. God called him <laughs> on it. <laughs> he knew. And Habakkuk didn't understand. And he even tells God, God, I don't understand. God, I don't like what you're doing. How could that be good? But we go down to chapter 2, verse 1, and Habakkuk's response is amazing. He does tell the Lord, I don't get it. I don't like it. Please do something else, right? And Habakkuk says, but I will stand at my watch. I will station myself on the watch post and I will look to see what God will do. I have to respect Habakkuk. <laughs> I know, I know myself well enough to say that that would probably not be my response. I have caught myself oftentimes just saying, Lord, like, 
what the heck are you doing? Why are you doing this? I don't get it. I'm kind of mad at you, God. And then just going on about my day. But Habakkuk says, no, I'm going to stop what I'm doing and I'm going to look and I'm going to see God move because he is moving. It's a promise of the Lord that God is moving. And Habakkuk says, all right, I'm going to stop what I'm doing. I'm going to change my outlook and the way that I am doing my day-to-day -day life because I will not miss what God is about to do. I need us all to imagine this watch post. Um, about, I think it was two years ago, um, me and a team spent some time in Carnarvon, Wales. Um, and if you look up the city of Carnarvon, you can actually see the original city walls. And these city walls surrounded the original city. Um, and you literally had to walk through a gateway and through the threshold of this wall in order to enter into the city. Um, this wall was a little more than two stories tall. Um, and they even built buildings off of this wall um, to help make it stronger. And on every corner, there was an actual tower that guards would climb up. And it was typically about the highest point in the town. And so these guards would climb up the tower um, to their watch post, very literally. <laughs> and because they were so high up, they could see so much farther than they would if they were living in town or standing on the streets. Um, and so guards would go up there and they would look to see if they had visitors or enemies coming into town. And because they were so high up, they were the first ones that could see. And so they would tell the people and they would either tell the people, hey, get ready and welcome these people or hey, get ready, we have to defend ourselves. And so I love that Habakkuk's response is, I'm going to go up and see. I'm not going to miss this. I might even be one of the first people to see God work. And so what do we do in the meantime? What does this mean for us? A few days ago, a friend and I were just talking about how hard <laughs> um, life can be and we were talking about a lot of the injustice that we see um, in our world and a lot of um, just sad things that are going on. It was not an encouraging conversation at first um, but eventually we actually found a devotional um, that we went through together later on and this devotional was all about how our God is a good God, and our God is full of love and mercy, and He is love, and He is mercy. However, Yahweh is also just, and our God cannot ignore evil. Sometimes it looks like God is ignoring the problem, right? Like, I know I'm not alone in that. <laughs> Sometimes it looks like the Lord is just not going to do anything about these problems that we see. That's okay to agree with. I know Habakkuk would say that as well. He does say that, in fact. But a part of this devotion had a quote, um, and the quote was really good. So if you're a note taker, please bring out your pens and get ready. Um, I actually wrote this on an index card and I keep it in my car because I need to be reminded of it. But the quote that they said that's really humbling is, the question is not, how will God fix our problems? The question instead is, how will God's people carry out God's will in this world? I'm going to say it again. The question is not, how will God fix our problems? But instead, the question is, how will God's people carry out God's will in this world? And figuring out God's will can be a really scary thing and very stressful. 
I remember trying to decide what university to go to and freaking out because I wanted to know what the Lord's will was. <laughs> and a lot of y'all can say, are probably going to say, Rachel, the Bible isn't a how-to book. Um, and it doesn't tell us how to live life in 2020. Um, doesn't tell us what job to pursue or what the best car we should drive or when to retire. And you're right, it doesn't. <laughs> the Bible is not a how-to book. However, the Bible is holy. And the Bible has a lot of great examples of holy people. And there are sections in the Bible where God very clearly gives us the basics of how we should be living for Him. And so I'm going to share some of those sections with y'all. In this time where we're saying, okay, Lord, like, what do we do in the meantime? <laughs> what, what do we do as we're waiting to see what you're going to do? The prophet Jeremiah tells us, do what is just and right. Rescue from the hand of the oppressors, the one who has been robbed. Do no wrong or violence to the foreigner, the fatherless, or the widow. And do not shed innocent blood in this place. Micah, later on, reminds us, Hey guys, Yahweh has shown you, O oh mortal beings, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. In the New Testament, Paul tells the church in Rome, we who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. And finally, we're called to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. This whole time... Habakkuk took his place in the watchtower because he refused to miss what the Lord was doing. So I want to challenge us today, church. Do these things. How are God's people going to carry out God's will in this world? By doing these things. And while we're at it, be on the lookout for how God is moving. Take your watch post, change your mindset, take time out of your day to ask the Lord to show us what he's doing because he is moving. And the last thing I want is for us to be a church that misses it. That's not going to be us, FEMC Brownwood. So let us go out and live the best life that we can for Christ. Know that I'm praying for y'all as, as we are surrounding the community of Brownwood, um, as we all have our different communities and groups of people, I'm praying for us that we um, can be a new beacon of light and that the Lord reminds us that we're not alone in this. Y'all have a great day, a great week, and I can't wait to see how the Lord showed you that he was working. Y'all have a good one.